my name is Nate. Uh, for many years, I ran a, an NGO called World Central Kitchen. Uh, that work took me to Ukraine in the beginning of the full-scale invasion in, in 2022. I had been there uh, a few times beforehand, including in, in 2014, um, after the, the beginning of, of the War for Independence. And um, I've spent much of the last uh, three years, over a 1,000 days now, the full-scale invasion has been going on. And so it is my uh, distinct honor today uh, to host a conversation with uh, Deputy Ambassador uh, from Ukraine to the United States, uh, Denis uh, Sienik. And uh, I've been working very closely with the embassy uh, over the last three years. And uh, so uh, I'm very uh, pleased to be here today to dive in a little bit deeper into some of the issues uh, that Ukraine is currently facing and also the world is currently facing uh, as it relates to Ukraine. And just for some quick background before we begin, um, Deputy Ambassador Sienek has been uh, in the Foreign Service for many years, uh, starting in 2007. He spent a good deal of his career in, in Canada uh, and also in the United Kingdom, and then was back in Ukraine uh, starting in 2015 and uh, was the Chief of Staff for the uh, Deputy First uh, Foreign Minister um, in uh, Kyiv. And then, in, so he was in Ukraine when the full-scale invasion started in February of 2022, and then came over uh, to our beautiful embassy, the Ukra beautiful Ukrainian embassy here in Georgetown uh, in January of 2023. So welcome. Thank you. Um, why don't we just uh, jump right into it? Let's let's kick off. Um, originally, uh, uh, your uh, ambassador, Ambassador uh, Makarova, was uh, going to join us uh, today as well, but she is hosting a delegation, a presidential delegation that is here in the United States from Ukraine. Uh, they've been in New York. They're now down here in Washington, D.C., and you are going to run off right after this, too, and you were just with them. So tell us a little bit. What's what's happening now? What are they here for? Um, what's the goals? What's the intention? Give us a little, a little update. Well, thank you. Thank you, Nate. Uh, well, but first of all, before we start, uh, I really want to, to say that it's a great pleasure to be with you today and with you all, guys. And uh, today is the International Volunteers Day. So congratulations, and uh, and uh, we sincerely appreciate uh, everything what 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 you do, what uh, Howard Buffett does, and actually I just really want to thank everyone because like you know uh, every gesture of, of of help to Ukraine matters, and uh, all those who even wave Ukrainian flags, uh, uh, who share a word with 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 their friends about why it is important to support Ukraine, those are volunteers. And uh, I, I really want to thank you uh, for, for uh, keeping the spirits up and helping us uh, in, in our fight. Um, well, this is uh, one of the reasons uh, why our delegation is, is in uh, Washington, D.C. It's not only the, the, the presidential delegation. We have uh, the first deputy prime minister of Ukraine, minister of economy, so uh, which uh, allows us to talk about like, the whole uh, the, 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 the wide range of issues, uh, not only the, 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 the security, but the economy and, and reconstruction and, and rebuild. And uh, the most important thing now is to continue advocating why it is important to support Ukraine and why it is important that Russia loses. And uh, the whole priority is to uh, try to, to, to explain more on the very essence of the Russian aggression and what, 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 how Russians see that and whether they are ready to stop or not. And the, well, for the, the answer for us is obvious. Uh, they are not ready. But of course, uh, we hear the calls uh, for, for uh, negotiations and peace talks, and our message is very clear. We are ready to do that. We have always been. Uh, the, 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 the question is whether the Russians are. So uh, the importance of uh, supporting Ukraine is uh, not only about Ukraine. It's about Europe and it's about the whole world. 
because we are now fighting the, 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 the axis of evil. And uh, if we fail, it will mean that not only Russia will benefit, but all the other uh, the, the aggressors and potential aggressors, and, and uh, we have really have to keep in mind North Korea and, and Iran. So I, I want to come back to your point about the economy and rebuilding, um, but uh, touching on North Korea and, and Iran, obviously we now have North Korean soldiers on the ground in occupied parts of Ukraine. Um, and obviously we've had Iranian drones um, attacking Ukraine almost daily. And, and now uh, these drones are getting uh, more uh, advanced, um, which, is, which is a really a huge problem. Uh, and obviously, as, as discussed earlier today, uh, these countries uh, do not operate in a vacuum. They're, they're supported by uh, countries like China. Do you see as this war has has evolved over the last two and a half, almost three years now, you know, this is often refer referred to as uh, Russia's war on Ukraine or Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Are we in a world war at this point? I mean, is this, you know, how, how does Ukraine see this right now and Ukraine see this, um, its own fight? Well, it is not World War, definitely, and, uh, and I think that we all should be happy about that. The, uh, is there a possibility of a bigger conflict? Uh, I do think so. But here is the important issue. It's all about Russia. And if Russia wins, then we are on the edge of a possible bigger conflict because, as I have just mentioned, of, of uh, Iran and, and North Korea. You can see the, the, the developments on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, nowadays, you can see the situation in the Middle East. And uh, I can assure you that uh, other, you know, like actors are... It used to be that I, 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 I used the word like we're sitting and watching. They are no longer sitting and watching. They are acting already, but the question is whether they will be allowed to unleash the, 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 the bigger uh, 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 conflict. Uh, look at what is going on with, uh, with, uh, uh, around North Korea and Iran, just two examples. Russia attacked us 2014. We had more than 200 rounds of negotiations with, with Russia, more than 20 ceasefires. Each of them was violated by Russia. And the, the, the lack of a strong response from the international community became a reason why Russia actually attacked us in 2022. So the situation is constantly aggravating. Then we received a a lot of assistance from our partners, and I must tell you that we are sincerely grateful for, for the, the, the assistance, the security and financial assistance, humanitarian assistance, particularly from the United States and the strong bipartisan uh, support in, in Congress. It was absolutely vital. And to the current administration, it was absolutely vital. But the issue is that that support was enough to, for us to keep fighting, but not to win. At the same time, Russia, invited North Korean troops to its territory. More than 10,000 North Koreans fighting Ukraine, ready to fight Ukraine. North Korea supplied ballistic missiles to, 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 to Russia. Iran, ballistic missiles and drones. You can see it's like it's constantly stepping up. And the issue is that if you compare ballistic missiles that uh, are coming from North Korea to, to Russia, then and now, they are different, they are more sophisticated. Because North Koreans, for some reason, use the, the Western technology there. At the same time, if you look at the, 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 the uh, uh, components that Russia is using for its missiles and drones, more than 50% of those components are coming from outside. And 89% of those components coming from outside are coming via China. 
So just imagine if all those flows were stopped, if the export control was stronger, then Russia would definitely be de deprived of the possibility to attack us more. It is not the case. That is why UNAID said that we are uh, suffering almost daily uh, attacks uh, uh, by, by Russian missiles and drones. I'm sorry, but you are wrong. We, it's daily attacks. And actually, they said records now of more and more drones and missiles sending to Ukraine. And they do that absolutely, you know, like, well, not responsibly, it's not the right word. Uh, we have already more than 100 uh, cases when Russian missiles and drones were flying in the close proximity to Ukraine's nuclear power plants. They don't really care. You know, they don't act uh, like there are no rules and no values uh, for, 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 for Russia. And in addition to that, uh, the, 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 the uh, human resources, you know, they are ready to send more and more every time and the, Putin doesn't care about, you know, like how many he loses every day. Even in a situation when he, uh, the, 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 the Russians also set records for them uh, in the number of losing more, more Russian soldiers uh, in Ukraine. So, uh, sorry for this long, long answer, but just to give the, 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 you know, the whole picture of what is going on, uh, I must say that uh, if Russia succeeds, the global repercussions for the global economy, for the global energy, for the global food security cannot be uh, overestimated. It's even quite hard to predict. And here, the question uh, is uh, with the US global leadership uh, that we really rely on and we hope that it will be continued. So, a uh, couple of things. Tell me about what the feeling has been so far in some of these, I know you can't speak to specifics of some of these meetings, but that you're having with the incoming administration, with members of Congress, um, how things are trending. Um, you know, I think uh, spending a lot of time in Ukraine before the election, uh, you know, to be, to be honest, uh, John McCain was always about real talk. Um, you know, the Ukrainians were not happy with the, the Biden administration. They felt like they were being deprived of the needs and this drip drab was leading to many Ukrainians dying unnecessarily. And so in some ways, while, you know, they may have been worried about a Trump administration because of the things that President Trump has said or J.D. Vance has said, in some ways there was actually some kind of some, some optimism that maybe a Trump administration would bring some change that could benefit Ukraine. So I'm curious overall how the feeling is now, especially with some of the appointees that uh, President Trump has announced. Um, and I'm also kind of curious as that connects to you mentioned today is, is International Volunteers Day. It is also an anniversary of another day when Ukraine um, agreed to give up its nuclear stockpile, um, including something like 176 uh, nuclear uh, missiles, strategic bombers. So can you talk a little bit about that and that sort of the global security and then also how these conversations are shaping um, the discussions with the, the incoming administration? Well, the short answer is no comments, <laughs> but <laughs> sorry uh, for not being able to share a lot with you, but um, well, look, uh, if we're talking about the, 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 the uh, current assistance first uh, that you mentioned, uh, as I said, uh, without the U.S. assistance, we would fail. We have to keep it clear and we want we don't want to lie to ourselves. I was in Ukraine in February 2022 when Russians attacked us. And I must tell you that, uh, yes, we stopped Russians. And, but one of the main reasons, in addition to the, 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 the uprise of Ukrainians and the, the, the high spirits and patriotism, and bravery and sacrifice that Ukrainians paid, is that uh, we had uh, the necessary weapons for the beginning uh, to, to, to fight with particular Russian tanks. I'm talking about javelins. Subsequently, in, in the recent like two years, we received everything, almost everything, what we wanted and what we needed. 
in order to be successful on the front line. So we will be eternally grateful to the American people, to the administration and to the Congress for, for, for that. The problem is that in many cases the assistance came late and the decisions were made late. At the same time, I must say that it's always better later than, uh, than never, right? And, uh, but uh, if we look at the comments of some uh, uh, members of the incoming or potential members, nominees of the incoming uh, uh, administration, many say that uh, Ukraine must have been given more and they blame right, the, 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 the current administration for, for losing, losing the momentum. And here is the issue. Uh, and then the rhetoric is, okay, the, 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 the momentum is kind of lost and we have to sit down and, and, and find, find, find the way out uh, of, 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 of the conflict. So uh, my answer is that it's, as I said, it's never late. And we Ukrainians have proven to be successful on the battlefield when we have enough assistance. You can remember 2022-2023. We liberated uh, more than half of the territories that Russians occupied. We liberated Black Sea. We destroyed one third of Russian Black Sea without having our own uh, Black Sea fleet. It's astonishing. The number of casualties that Russians have suffered and continue suffering is also outstanding. And that is because we know how to fight. We are fighting, you know, the, 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 the one of the biggest country, uh, armies in the world. The one that has been considered for, for years as an unbeatable. And we have proven that it is not. The main problem here is the number of troops that Russians have and now the number of missiles and drones and etc that Russians have. So I can assure you that if we have more resources we are able to deliver for 1000 days, more than 1000 days, which is 997 days more than Putin expected, we are protecting the world from the Russian peace. Sorry for, for saying that you know, like in, this, in this way, but it is true, it is how it is. And I must assure you that we are ready to do that. And the time definitely hasn't come for any uh, you know, peace deal with the p potential you know, like, uh, concessions in terms of sovereignty of Ukraine. It's not only about Ukraine, it's about the future of the world. The repercussions will be absolutely terrible. And uh, to, 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 to tell you, as I said, we have always been committed to the peace. It is Russia that is not committed. I don't know if you followed the, the interview of the Russian uh, deputy foreign minister yesterday for CNN. Ridiculous. Uh, he said that the Ukrainian plan and Putin's plan have nothing in common and the chances for compromise are zero. That's what Russians are saying. So here comes the question is when we talk about the strategy, uh, you can ask us what, how we see the strategy and many of you know the answer. But the question is to Russians, what is their strategy? And apparently their strategy is simply continue doing what they are doing in that way, not only undermining Ukraine, but undermining everything what is you know, to the West, the West and the United States of America. Do you, do you think Ukraine made a mistake when it gave up its, its nuclear weapons based on what's happened since? And then corollary to that, because this <coughs> is something that's happening now, is um, you know, Ukraine has begun to and made tremendous progress in rebuilding its own defense industrial complex. And one of the things uh, General uh, Valery Zeluzhny, who is now the Ukrainian ambassador to the UK, has said that by 2027, Ukraine will be, he believes, Ukraine will be self-sufficient in terms of producing its own weapons to defend itself. Ukraine recently launched, test-fired its own ballistic missile 
Um, there was an article in the Financial Times noting that uh, Ukraine could re-nuclearize. Um, you know, there's differing opinions on how quickly that could happen. But going back to the, the Budapest Memorandum and, and this, w w what's the outlook now? Where do, where do you see that going forward and... And what are your it's thoughts? quite hard to talk about the historical retrospective of why we did that and uh, well, the conditions were different, the circumstances were different. I believe what is more important uh, as we, I don't know, it's not celebration, but it's probably even the better word commemorates 20 years, 30, 30 years of, of, of the signing of the Budapest Memorandum exactly today, is that it was an evident example of how Russia cannot be trusted. We simply believed uh, Russians and other countries. Uh, and we see the results. So that you know, plain document, uh, which is worth nothing nowadays, is a clear example why President Zelensky nowadays is speaking about the need of having strong guarantees for Ukraine. Guarantees that will secure our independence and will secure us from the major Russian assault. And there is no alternative to the, the, the security guarantees yet as to, uh, our membership in NATO. We've been talking a lot about it, and our position hasn't changed. This is the best guarantee to stop the war and to prevent Russia from uh, further larger uh, scale attack against other countries. Speaking about the joint production of, of weapons and the Ukrainian uh, military uh, uh, industry you mentioned, we have done tremendous success, just tremendous success. I cannot go into details for the security reasons, but I can assure you that uh, Ukrainian military industry before 2022 and now, those are like two different stories. Uh, it was done because of our investments and our potential, but of course because of the partnerships, including with the United States of America. But we are already producing lots of interesting things that Russians definitely hate. And uh, you have, you were able to see, and you can uh, see you know, the results uh, when another Russian military target or, or the refinery is, is, is uh, uh, hit uh, by uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, drones. And uh, I, I can assure you that we have many, many more uh, projects uh, in line. And, uh, and again, this is, you know, another, um, uh, it, it's a win-win story for, for Ukraine and for our Western partners. Uh, you also mentioned the, 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 the recovery. So we, have, we are talking about the security assistance and joint production. You know, all the supplementals and the security assistance in, in the supplementals, you know that uh, most of the assistance first stays here, creating more jobs. But at the same time, as we get older weapons, the United States gets newer weapons, but at the same time, as we talk about the joint production, it is definitely beneficial for the uh, U.S. Uh, military uh, uh, complex. And uh, recovery and reconstruction, we, the government of Ukraine is doing its best to, 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 to uh, create more jobs and to, 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 to uh, open new factories, to restart plants. The reason for that is uh, to, to, to increase the internal revenue so that we are less dependent from our uh, Western partners. It is obvious. But what is important here to understand is that uh, many people differentiate di like the security assistance, assistance and economic assistance. They cannot be separated. It's, it's, coming, it's a one package. Because if we lose our economy, we will lose our country, we will lose our army. Because like a big bunch, it's, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, more than 30% or around 30% of Ukrainian budget is directed at the military, for the military purposes. It's huge. It's more definitely more than 2% of uh, the, the target for the NATO uh, countries. So, uh, but again, 
as I said, it is all interconnected. As we create more jobs and open new uh, businesses and support new businesses, and as we want to attract new investments, and trust me, there is a huge interest uh, from foreign investors to come to Ukraine, we have to be able to uh, ensure the safety of, uh, of, of uh, our factories and plants. And we, that is why we need air defense. Air defense to protect not only critical in infrastructure and the energy grid and, and the social infrastructure, but also our economy as such. Yeah, one, one of the things that I think a lot of people don't realize is, is now the, the amount of production that Ukraine is capable of as it brought factories back online. And in fact, um, it is uh, able to produce much more internally if it had more cash to do so. Um, and this is one of the big arguments. Denmark and a number of countries have, have actually given money, uh, not in the form of weapons, but given money for Ukraine to produce its own weapons. Um, and I think that's, that's a, a very big opportunity uh, for Ukraine, uh, in addition to the, many, the other natural resources and, and a, lot that, um, a lot of things that Ukraine has to offer. And uh, one of the points of discussion that was brought up earlier today is the uh, Russian frozen assets. Um, give us a quick 30 second, we don't have a ton of time, but what's, what's the current state of things there? Is, is Ukraine still optimistic about getting this? I know there's some of the, the, the interest that's, that's gone to Ukraine, but um, what's, is that still a focus area? Well, that's definitely a priority. Uh, try to be short. We're talking about 300 billion Russian dollars frozen at the moment. Yes, we received now 50 billion from the revenues. That will be directed to, 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 to Ukraine. It's a lot, but at the same time, we cannot see the reason why we cannot use the remaining part. It's Russia that has to pay for the reconstruction in Ukraine. There was, and there is skepticism in the, 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 the European Union, and particularly in Belgium, where, which has $200 billion. But we will keep advocating and explaining why it is necessary to take that money, send them to Ukraine for the Ukrainian recovery, and also to buy weapons if, in order for Ukraine to be able to fight Russians. We don't, like, of course, like many of you can, can argue, like, what's the point that, that other countries have to pay? I agree with you, but the reality is that we cannot alone. That is why we rely on you. But, of course, the main priority for us is just to make Russia do that. So we'll keep on working with that, and, and uh, I am sincerely hopeful for the, 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 the uh, future administration that it will be one of the priorities. So bef before we wrap up today, you know, one of the things that, that I, I think about a lot as I spend time in Ukraine, which is such an, an incredible country, um, and you see so many amazing innovation, and and I mean, even still to this day, the culture and the art that goes on, and and the music, and just the life, and the way Ukrainians have have persisted throughout the last thousand plus days, um, and you know, here in the United States, I think we hear a lot about the problems and the challenges. And there's fatigue in that, right? We're all watching the news, oh, Ukraine still needs this, still needs that. Like, we've got our own issues, we have our own problems with our own border and this and that. Um, but I think it's important to, to focus on and, and mention some of the, um, the good news, right? Um, you know, I, I think it is uh, underappreciated, the, the victory of getting the Black Sea reopened and the amount of food that has now gone out of Ukraine to feed the world because on their own, um, you know, they were able to create a, a path to, to enable at least some of the ports to be operational, which is, which is huge. So I'm curious if, if you could talk a little about, maybe you could leave us with some thoughts on, you know, what are some of the optimistic things? What are some of the things that are trending in a good direction, things that you've seen recently? Um, I know there's some recent polling out. Um, sh maybe share a little bit about kind of some things that, that have you hopeful about the direction things are going. Well, I must tell you, uh, Everyone I'm talking in Ukraine, and of course, including my, my relatives, no one wants to live with Russia and under Russia. 
On the 1st of December 1991, we, more than 90% of Ukrainians voted for independence because they know what it is to live 70 years under the Soviet Union and more than 100 years uh, under the boots of the Russian Empire. We know that Russia cannot be trusted. So the all the Ukrainians have the spirits up. I can assure you, as I'm talking as the Ukrainian diplomat, as an Ukrainian, but also as an uncle of a nephew, 22 years old nephew, who is serving in Ukrainian army, who volunteered, and is now in very, very hot uh, place, who has suffered a number of concussions, and he says, no, I will not stop, simply because I'm not fighting for Ukraine, I'm fighting for Europe, but also I just really want to stop Russia and all the war crimes Russia is committing. And what is important for me and what is inspiring for me is the, 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 the recent uh, survey that uh, the, the, the uh, Ronald Reagan uh, Institute uh, uh, issued, if not mistaken today, and it was aired at the Fox News, that 90% uh, of uh, uh, respondents here, Americans, say that 80% say that Russia is an enemy and 75% say that Ukraine is an ally, and more than half support, uh, 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 are in favor of continuing support of Ukraine. That is inspiring. But what is even more important for me is that um, more than half of the respondents uh, want the United States to be more active on the foreign policy. So for me, this is a clear sign that uh, uh, and the hope that uh, United States will be more active. And, uh, and I can tell you that uh, the words that the president-elect said, uh, Donald Trump said uh, before, is that no one would think to attack anyone if that or another country knows of the repercussions it will suffer. It is absolutely right. That's what we want peace through strength. And this is really inspiring Ukrainians. Trust me, Ukrainians want this war, war be over. But it must be over with a just and lasting peace, but not appeasement. Well, thank you, Deputy Ambassador. Um, I think I speak for, for everyone here today that is so appreciative of everything that Ukraine is doing um, and the sacrifices that it has made. So we will keep doing our part to uh, to make sure, to ensure that that support continues. So. Thank you so much. And I can tell you that, uh, uh, speaking about the inspiration, it is so inspiring to see the, the, the support we have from the, uh, our Western countries. And I must tell you that those people whom I'm, uh, I was talking to about your work, Nate, you are doing in Ukraine, trust me, every time you come to Ukraine, you go to Odessa, to Kiev, or other parts, this is really uh, lifts the spirits up of, 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 of many people. It's not only about the, the, the assistance that you are providing, it's about the knowledge that we are not alone and that we are together with you. And really, thank you for, for doing that. Thank you so much. And when is the Lviv airport opening so we can <laughs> come in and fly in? I hope it's soon. <laughs> Something to look forward to. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.